Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. Today I want to walk you through the brand new scroll magic cheat sheet that you can download and start using today. The layout of the scroll magic cheat sheet might look familiar to you if you used my green sock cheat sheet. At the top we've got a couple links that link to the demo to the GitHub page, documentation, and the CDN as well. So you can click through these links to get to the right page. And then we've got a couple sections. The first one, where you can copy and paste the snippet to activate your controller. And then we've got a section where we can define multiple options for the controller itself. That's where we would set up a different container. Where would you also change to horizontal scrolling? and define a global scene options if you want to define trigger hook for all the scenes on the site. Then there is a refresh interval and lock level 3. These are advanced debugging tools. Then we have a section where we defining controller and adding scene to it. Multiple scenes as well. And if we want to add a newly created scene, this is the code snippet for that. For responsive scrolling animations, you might need to use these remove a scene, destroy, enable, and update scene. So these are more advanced code snippets. Add indicators is a very handy plugin that lets you debug your scrolling animations very easily. You can name the triggers, you can change the indent and the colors of the starting and ending trigger elements. So visually, it's much easier to debug your scrolling animations, okay? So these are the code snippets for the Add Indicators plugin. Then at the top in the middle, we have a section, the most important section, where we're defining a scene. So firstly, we're defining the scene and adding it to controller. And below is a section where we define the options for the scene. Okay, so we've got a duration, duration is zero or 100%. So make sure when it's zero, it doesn't need the quotes, but when it's 100% for the responsive animations, it's inside of the quotes. Then we're defining offset, trigger element, trigger hook 0 0.5, which is the number between zero and one, and trigger hook using the keywords on enter, on center, and on leave. Then we're changing the reverse between true and false, and again, we're defining the log levels. Okay, so these are the options, all the options for your scroll magic scene. Then we have a section where we toggling classes using scroll magic. We're using the set class toggle to define the element we want to change the class on, and then the class which will be added to this element. And then we have a multiple classes as well. Okay. And the last thing in the toggle class section is a remove class toggle, which means that once this scene is not active, the class will remain on the element or not. In the following section, we are pinning few elements. So if you want to pin elements, this is how you would use the set pin element and also override the push followers to false, because push followers is by default set to true. And if you want to fire a specific callback function at a specific time of the scene, then you can use the on change update progress start and enter or leave callbacks. So when you scroll down on enter, on start and on progress, this is the order of your callbacks. And on the way up, the order would be on progress, on start and on leave. So these are more advanced callback functions for more advanced scrolling animations concepts. And in the top right, we have a multiple scenes section where we have a code snippet for a loop. So if you want to trigger a specific animation for multiple elements on the page. So in this example, we're looking for the project element. And for each of them, we're creating a scene that will add a class fade in to our project. Okay, so this is handy for multiple projects elements or multiple elements on the page in general. And the last section is dedicated to GSAP. So if you're working with GreenSock, this is how you can add a twin to your scene. Then you can store your twin inside of the variable and then reference it inside of the set twin this way. 
and the same thing applies for a timeline. So you can create a timeline, add tweens to it and then add it to the scene. Okay, so this is handy if you're working with GSEP and I hope you are taking advantage of the powerful combination of scroll magic and green sock. And if you are new to scroll magic and want to get up to speed very quickly, check out the scroll magic 101 where I will talk you through some of the basic principles in under 50 minutes. This is the quickest way how you can get started with scroll magic. So go to scroll magic course bitly slash scroll magic course and sign up for free. I hope you find this scroll magic cheat sheet useful when working on your next scrolling animation project and let me know in the comments if you've got any questions regarding scroll magic and the cheat sheet itself. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this from the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. Until next time, happy coding, bye!